What's up, Wolfpack? I'm Ashley Borton. And I'm Ken Passion. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd, and we're here today for your distance learning announcements. Oak Grove High becomes the first high school to have six baseball players to be playing in the MLB. Here are the details from John Shahan. Hey, Wolfpack, I'm here with your sports update. And today we'll be talking about Elk Grove High School's 2013 baseball team having six major league stars on it. First up, we got Rowdy Telez, first baseman and designated hitter, drafted out of his senior year of the 2013 class to the Toronto Blue Jays in the 30th round. Next up, also from the 2013 class, we have Dom Nunez as a catcher, drafted in the sixth round by the Colorado Rockies after being committed to UCLA. Next up, we got J.D. Davis, drafted in the 2011 draft by the Tampa Bay Rays in the fifth round, later on drafted in the 2013 draft in the third round out of college after he went to Cal State Fullerton. Here we have Nick Madrigal, drafted in the 17th round by the Cleveland Indians out of high school, later on drafted in the first round, fourth overall, coming out of Oregon State by the Chicago White Sox. And last but certainly not least, we have Dylan Carlson, drafted in the 2016 draft by the St. Louis Cardinals in the first round, 33rd overall, right out of high school. Here's the latest update on Science Olympiad with Eden and her interview with Ms. Johnson. Let's take a look. What are your plans for Science Olympiad this term? So in Science Olympiad this term, uh, we are going to be recruiting new members. We currently have six members and a full team consists of 15. So we'll be spending a lot of time recruiting. Uh, and this year as well, since there's not going to be a physical or there likely will not be a physical competition, uh, instead each month Science Olympiad will be hosting virtual events. So each month has its own theme. Uh, and there will be study sessions, there will be interviews and uh, webinars with uh, actual scientists and engineers in that particular field. And then at the end of the month, there will be a competition with uh, national rankings for each individual member who participates. So that's what we'll be working forward to this, uh, this year in this term. How has the pandemic affected the way you would usually organize or run this club? The pandemic has certainly thrown uh, quite a wrench into what Science Olympiad normally would be. Um, typically, we have a very strong engineering component. We do have a, an architectural design and engineering academy on campus that we work very closely with or we try to work very closely with. Um, unfortunately, if there's not going to be an in-person competition, that makes engineering a little bit more difficult. Um, it also makes um, that collaboration of getting together, meeting in person, sharing ideas is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, however, with tools like Zoom um, and Google Meets, we should be able to um, still interact uh, accordingly. Um, and um, hopefully some of those uh, events that we would normally be able to participate in, uh, there'll be alternatives for those. Um, uh, alternatives like online examinations or um, there will be coding probably that will be happening as well um, again all digitally and all through um, uh, zoom or some other web client like this um, what goals do you hope to achieve the, by this year even with the pandemic involved uh, this year our goal is to uh, place and regionals regionals is still uh, going to happen whether it's in person or uh, over distance like Zoom. Um, last year we were two spots away from making it to state. So every year we've gone a little bit closer to making it to state. So uh, maybe this year with um, all the different changes that are going to be happening that our team can be very highly adaptable um, and very good at the working uh, through this digital lens uh, and perhaps we will make it to state this year. State is always our goal, but we're closer than ever this year. So join our team. So hopefully we can, we can you can help us, help us get there. Uh, if you are interested in joining the Science Olympiad, if you have any sort of passion for science or engineering or mathematics, uh, I highly recommend you get, a, get in touch with me, get in contact with me so I can give you all the information. We are always looking to grow. Um, a team consists of normally 15 students, but if we have enough students, we can maybe make a second team. Uh, we're also planning to work with middle school students this year, so if you have family members that are in middle school, especially over at Pinkerton, who are interested in joining our team, uh, be sure to contact me and let me know.
Science Olympiad is going to have their first interest meeting after Club Rush. Here is a Google Form link for students who are interested in joining. Learning has definitely been difficult this year. In an interview with Principal Howdigy, here is what he has to say. All right, good afternoon. I'm Johnny Howdigy, a principal at Kasumis Oaks High School. Um, oh man, it's, it's, it's been a challenge. Um, I would say in terms of distance learning, when we were, uh, I want to say at the end of last school year, we were already preparing for, for this school year, right? So back in June, we were really um, taking steps to prepare for this year, but we just were really not sure how the fall would look. And so um, it was upon, you know, our, our office staff, our teachers, our, our administrators, our vice principals to come together and really, I guess, um, predict what that would look like for the fall. And so our district um, at the time had adopted the, the two models, the transitional and the distance learning model. And then, you know, at the end of July, you know, uh, the state and Sac County um, basically came up um, with their directives that all schools would start off with uh, distance learning. And so we, you know, we fell in line as well because we're part of the Sacramento County. And so in terms of distance learning, we've had, um, you know, our teachers have, uh, were preparing over the summer, whether, we, you know, it wasn't really formal training, but it was definitely informal, you know, um, creating, I guess I should say, of, you know, their Google Classrooms, you know, trying to figure out Zoom and other online applications that they could use, you know, to, to really create an engaging environment for kids, right? You know, it's kind of a challenge in a, in a Zoom session, right, to, to keep it engaging. I would say the challenges that continue to happen are, you know, I think all teachers right now in a lot of ways feel like new teachers. I mean, I feel as, you know, I'm a principal of a, a new virtual school and there are things that we're trying that we've really never tried before, you know? And so, you know, there are things like Edpuzzle, um, you know, Screencastify. I didn't know about Screencastify months ago. And now, you know, it's a district adopted, you know, online application. Do you have any encouraging messages for students this year? We just need to be flexible. Um, I want to say adaptive, right? I mean, right now, it's, it's a time where, like, we don't know in a regular year. We would know what, you know, November would look like, what January would look like. And this year, it's absolutely different. Like, we don't know where we are in terms of this pandemic, you know, a few months from now, right? Yeah. I think we're really playing things, you know, week by week, you know, maybe month by month. And the goal is always just to make sure that, you know, our, our teachers, our staff are providing the best learning environment for students. But I would say for students, my challenge and, and my hope for you is just to maintain, you know, flexibility, give yourself that grace and that ability to just, you know, learn and try to adapt to the online learning environment and try to stay connected, you know, to your friends and family. You know, I know it can be a challenge being on a computer for, you know, most, you know, part of the day. And then all of a sudden, you know, having all this work to do, whether it's homework or not, but just make sure that you're maintaining, you know, your, your connections with your friends and your, and your families, because it is a challenge, but it's very important during this time. And that's all we have for you today, Wolf Pack. I'm Ken Passion, and remember, the strength of the pack is a wolf. The strength of the wolf is the pack. Have a good one, Wolf Pack.